Hi guys, Mr. Freedy here here. In today's video, I'm providing you today with the weekly mixtape reset for the 24th of the 3rd of 2017. Today's mixtape is focusing on Bounty Hunter and also is bringing you a double EXP. Now, I believe this double EXP is going to be lasting up till next week Tuesday or next week Wednesday. But also, one thing to also mention and to also remember is the fact that next week will be the live DLC drop for Colony which will also have a 24-7 Colony remake map being active for all users or all platforms with double EXP and trials for those that haven't decided with buying the game. It will provide, the trials will provide you with two missions, one will be a story mission and one will be for the gauntlet and then you'll be given access to play the multiplayer over the weekend with double EXP for a selected period. But anyways, today's mixtape, is, like I said, is Bounty Hunter. And for many of you who know what what to do with Bounty Hunter, the point of Bounty Hunter is that you're, you're going to be taking out AI, Titans and enemy AI, and collect them as much money as possible, go to your depot area, deposit it, and gradually reach the highest point. And I believe the highest amount is 4,500 or 5,000 in total. Now, there are quite easy and simple ways to achieve this. But all this kind of lays down to where you set up area, where you set up your kind of attack area, how much firepower you provide, what type of boost, titan and class ability you use, and generally how your teammates are supporting you as well. Because if you support your teammates and everyone with each other, it makes it a lot more easier to gather more points and generally win overall. So here's a tip that I like to provide to people. This tip here is called crowd control. Ideally, when the AI start dropping the game, they're all going to be bunched up. So basically this will allow you to get a high amount of kills quite quickly, quite quickly depending on the weapon you have or the boost or whatever perk ability you have. Now the problem with this though is that it's not only just you going to be focusing on that point. Your teammates and the enemy teammates are going to be focusing on this AI as well. So then this puts you into this tough situation where the enemy AI and the enemy players will all be focusing on each other enemy players will be racking up points and then they could move over and then start attacking you and then steal your points and then this could go on and on and in many ways it could split into two ways either one you'll be able to fight back and get the points back or two you get steamrolled and you lose the area and then you pretty much lose the points but there's always a way to make a comeback but it will require you to get quite sweaty and if you're the type of person that doesn't want to be quite sweaty then this may be a lot trickier to achieve. So, first thing I'd like to say is pick a loadout that is ideal for a huge crowd control. For Bounty Hunter, I would recommend that you go with a weapon that is that is quite usable against multiple groups of enemy and allows you to keep firing or allow you to re reload quickly, but also providing you with enough firepower to take on pilots. Ideally, you can either go with the car that is quite, that's quite fast, reloads quite quickly, and is quite lethal around when aiming at headshots. And has quite a nice ammo consumption as well. You can either go with the Spitfire, that has a bigger ammo pack, it hits quite hard. And against pilots, it does actually does do some devastating damage to them. You can either go with the Devotion, that's also quite devastating against both pilots and AI when bumped up. Or, if you're the type of person that likes to experiment, the EPG or the softball are also ideal for these type of situation. Both these two type of weapons allows you to take out big groups of people if clumped up together, thus saving you more time and saving you ammo. Although against pilots, it might be a bit more difficult. But if you're someone that's used the EPG or even the softball for quite a long time, and pretty much mastered it, then this shouldn't be much of a problem. Secondly, you want to be aware of that you're going to need the anti-titan weaponry. Bounty Hunter, although it will keep to being pilot versus pilot versus AI, you will have enemy enemy titans dropping and enemy titan AI dropping. So ideally, if you don't have your titan ready and you don't have a primary weapon that's going to be suitable for this type of combat, you need to pick a anti-titan weaponry that will be beneficial with at least racking up enough points to push your team for the win. I would recommend that you go to Archer as it allows you to lock on quite quickly and does quite a bit of damage or the EPG or the Thunderbolt as the Thunderbolt basically allows you to cover multiple grounds it damages all enemies within that path and if you're lucky you may even destroy that enemy Titan or even 
kill a pilot. That's quite rare, but it's possible. Or, lastly, you can always go with the charge rifle. Charge rifle allows you to fire at much longer distances, so it's a bit more safer for people who don't want to engage in such restrictive tactics. And with the quick fire mod, it will basically allow you to spam it at a rel very relatively quick speed. Next, you want to be picking your class. Your class kind of varies down to what you want and what you enjoy. Personally for me, I tend to stick with either phase shift, sonar or cloak for this type of game mode. Each one allows me to have a certain ad advantage around the battlefield. Cloak will allow me to go invisible and sneak up on people or sneak up on a bunch of enemies and basically get understanding of what's, what's happening and who's in the area without being spotted so easily. Sonar will basically allow me to know where enemies are and know where enemies are hiding or camping. And phase will basically, basically allow me to phase in and out of situations that may be risky and dangerous for me to either attack or whether I just need to get out of there quickly enough. You could also go with Stim. Stim will basically allow you to get from point A to point B at a much quicker rate. And if you combine this with wall running and slide and bunny hopping, you can get to pretty much anywhere within the map within a short amount of time. This saves you a lot of time and effort. But if you don't want to, you can always go to Grapple. Grapple will basically allow you Grapple will basically do the same task, the same job as Stim, but maybe at a little to less speed. Your Titan, do be aware that your Titan I would recommend for this type of game mode has to be someone that's ideal for taking out large groups of enemies. But you also have to pick a Titan that is ideal for, against other Titans and against other enemy Titans, like enemy AI Titans. This sounds quite confusing when I explain it, but basically think of it this way. If you're playing on complex, you want a Titan that's ideal for close range, big area of denial, and large damage. So for me, in this type of situation, I usually pick Scorch. Scorch will basically allow me to cover an area, block off entrances so that the enemy Titans won't be able to come out, and basically allow me to clean up most enemy AI in the area, and practically close and trap most Titans that come into my area. Thus allow me to win much more easier using my flame shield or using my thermal primary weapon or even use my gas canisters to basically trap them and pretty much pretty much melt them. Or you can go with Ronin, although Ronin is kind of a kind of a risky Titan to use because in that he has much lower health. And in small maps like Complex, it kind of it doesn't really fit in or play within your advantage unless you use the map very smart. As in, you'll have to basically go around, get behind players, and you know, pretty much ambush them. And sometimes a very skilled Ronin player will be able to use this as an advantage. Phase shift into areas, escape when they know that they can't fight back, use their main sword block ability to do as much damage as possible, and soak up as much damage as possible. And in this many ways, it can actually play within your favor. But it can also be your downfall. But on larger maps now, such as forward base Kodai or, or Eden, for example, you will probably want to pick a Titan such as Tone or pick a Titan such as Ion, who are both good or averagely good against pilots and AI, but are exceptionally really well designed against other Titans. So in many ways, you, have, you kind of have to think through what you want. But personally for me, for Bounty Hunter type game modes, I would choose Scorch. Ideally, ideally, for you, I would recommend that you choose Scorch and Ronin. Play around with them on all maps. Understand how they play out. Understand the effectiveness they have with the maps. Understand the, dis understand the disadvantages they have. And then use that within your favour to then make playing Mount Hunter much more easier. Because these are the two type of titans that are great for racking up kills and racking up big bonuses. If played correctly. Your pilot kit can be whatever you like. It doesn't really matter what you choose, but I recommend that you probably go with Field Report as one of the pilot kits to basically help you with understanding who on your team has died and where to, and who on the enemy team has died and where to. So in many ways, it'll allow you to know where most of the firefights are happening and how you can approach that. Your ordnance, I would recommend that you go with something that has a quite a large radius, either frag grenade or satchel or charge. Both of these do have quite a large radius. Fire grenade will basically allow you to basically shorten the fuse for a short amount of time, thus allow you to throw it within whenever time within within the given limit that you have available. And then satchel charge will basically allow you to throw a satchel 
overhead a group of people or overhead a group of AI and allow you to detonate it either mid-air or when it goes on the ground. Also, it's really great for taking on Titans as it does quite a bit of damage. I believe it does about the same amount of damage that a Archer would do. So if you have a good aim using the Satchel, this weapon is great for taking out Titans if you don't have an anti-Titan weapon available with you. Lastly now, I would recommend that you go with something for your boost that allows you either to cover multiple grounds or to basically protect you. Ideally, I would choose either the tick mine. Uh, the tick mine can be thrown into multiple areas that have AI or has pilots in it and they'll allow you to rack up some more kills depending as sometimes they're able to kill them in a short amount of time, other times they won't be able to react quick enough because they get blown up. Or you can go with Amp Weapon, and Amp Weapon will basically play within your favour with killing AI and pilots within a short amount of time and destroying titans within a short amount of time, both AI titans and both normal titans. And this could play within your favour if used very well, and if you have a team that knows how to use Amp Weapons very well, this could really change the tide of the battle. But that's kind of one of my ideas for a specific loadout that focuses on crowd control. You want to pick something that allows you to take the battlefield by force. Allows you to take out a group of enemy and players within a short amount of time without focusing too much on other things worry, other things happening. Because one problem you have in Bounty Hunter is that the moment you get killed, the amount of money that you got will be halved. And once it's halved, this basically means that either A, you're going to have to go back and go get those points, by either killing another pilot or killing AI or B you're going to have to be quite lucky and basically try to make it up within the next round. So in many ways everything has kind of a reaction to each other and if you don't think quickly enough it's going to end quite badly for you and even your teammates and overall the whole game. But that's just a brief explanation of what type of crowd control loadout that you would probably want to go with. Now you can always go with something else, your main primary weapon doesn't have to be, like I said, either the car or the Spitfire or the Devotion, it could always be the R201, that's both versatile and lethal. You can always go with the L-Star, that basically allows you to fire non-stop until it basically overheats. Or if you wanted to, you can always just go simply with the R97, if you're the type of person that likes to move about on the go not and basically hit fire as much as possible. But this is just a brief idea that's something that some of you can use to basically help with making Bounty Hunter a bit more easier for you to understand. So that's the end of the video, I do hope you enjoyed, if you did then leave a like for more or leave a dislike. Also leave a comment in the comment section stating your opinions on the matter and whether you feel like maybe there's some other things you'd like me to cover, I'm always open to your opinions. Also do subscribe as subscribing does help my channel grow and it also does allow me to bolster my views and also spread more content over similar games as I do have some games that I would love to share to people but I don't really want to show it just of yet until people feel a bit comfortable with my channel. So by all means thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.